Hi guys, I know you've probably heard a lot of the typical tips for traveling with your toddler. So in this video, I'm going to try to give you some tips that you may not be aware of that will help you from having a miserable travel day with your little one. My name is Brittany and this is the stuff that I've learned after traveling with my two-year-old son a lot and making a whole bunch of mistakes myself. FYI, this list is a lot more than just 11 tips. I could literally give you 8 billion tips on traveling with a toddler, but I have tried to limit it to 11-ish. I just want you to have the best ever experience possible traveling with your toddler because I have loved it so much for me and I want other people to have this experience as well. So I am trying my best to pack this video with useful information from start to finish. First of all, if you have one of those travelable foldable strollers that fits into the overhead compartment on an airplane or it's been advertised as fitting in the overhead, you've checked the dimensions and you know it's going to fit, you may find that when you go to check in for your flight, the person at the check-in counter still tries to make you gate check or check your stroller even though you tell them it's gonna fit in the overhead compartment. If this happens to you, don't worry about fighting them on it. Just play along, take the gate check sticker that they give you, navigate the airport with your stroller, and when you get to the gate, before you get to the gate, before the gate agents see you, fold up your stroller and put it into its travel bag so it doesn't look like a stroller anymore. It looks like a normal carry-on bag. If your stroller is actually carry-on size and it looks like a normal carry-on, none of the flight attendants or gate agents are going to question you about it. Just carry it onto the plane as you normally would any other carry-on. For whatever reason, there are lots of stories out there of airlines giving parents trouble for trying to get their travelable, foldable strollers onto an airplane. Some airplanes just have policies about no strollers on on board, but if it's folded up and doesn't look like a stroller, nobody has to know about it. For a list of the most popular fold-up strollers for travel, sign up for my newsletter down below and you'll get my Excel sheet of travel stroller research emailed to you right now. Okay, if your toddler is going to have their own seat on the airplane next to you, if you want, you can bring their car seat on board with you. You don't have to, but you can if you want to, but you need to check your car seat and make sure that it is FAA approved. Even better, go to the airline that you're traveling with and see if they have any policy or regulations as far as what type of car seat you're allowed to bring on board. There have been reports of some parents bringing their car seat to the gate only to be denied bringing their car seat on board because it just wasn't the type of car seat that was allowed on that airplane, on that airline, and so it's always good to double check. If you didn't know, you can always check or gate check car seats for free. If your toddler is still under two years old, they can technically still fly as a lap infant, meaning that you don't need to purchase them their own seat. They can sit on your lap during the the flight. Usually lap infants are free or really close to free. It's usually a percentage of whatever you're paying for your adult ticket. Now, here's the important part. When you're buying your ticket online, a lot of times for many airlines, it's not possible for you to add your lap infant right there online. Unfortunately, I know it's very annoying. You often have to call the airline after you've purchased your ticket and add your lap infant over the phone, meaning that you'll probably have to wait on hold. You might be switched over, transferred over, several times, but this is something you need to do right away, right after you purchase your tickets. And the reason for this is if you wait, your ticket, the price of your adult ticket is going to go up. It's going to increase as you get closer and closer to your travel day. So the longer you wait to call the airlines and add your lap infant, the more expensive your lap infant's ticket, the percentage of your ticket is going to cost you. So bottom line, buy your ticket online and then call the airline right away and add your lap baby. Always, always, always travel with a copy of your child's birth certificate either to prove their age if they're flying as a lap infant to prove that they're under two years old a lot of airlines require this and if you don't have a passport you'll need your birth certificate to prove their age or to prove that you are their parent because your name is on their birth certificate this will be important sometimes if you're traveling between certain international borders. Nine times out of 10, nobody's gonna ask you for this, but it's better to be overprepared. Also, if you're traveling alone with your child internationally and your child has another parent, another guardian that's not coming with you, make sure that you bring a signed and notarized letter from that parent saying that it's okay for you to be crossing an international border with your child without that parent present. This is super important. Again, you probably won't be asked for it, but just in 
case you want to have this on you. If you're not sure exactly what documents you need to travel with your baby internationally, check out this video next. Please, 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 no matter where you're traveling, no matter how safe you feel traveling wherever it is you're going, always, always, always keep all of your most important things, your phone, your wallet, your keys, your passport, your boarding passes, your credit cards, anything that you feel like would devastate you for at least a few days, maybe a few weeks, would definitely ruin your trip anyway. Keep all of those items attached to you at all times throughout your travel day. So I'm talking a fanny pack, a travel wallet, nothing in your pockets that can fall out or be pickpocketed, nothing in your bags that can potentially be separated from you, especially when you're traveling with a toddler because your toddler can bolt off in another direction, you'll turn your back on your bags at some point, of course, during your travel day, and it's very easy for somebody to take advantage of a parent who's traveling with a baby or young children or toddler and unfortunately steal their stuff and you don't want this to happen to you so keep everything securely attached I say this because I just read about a scam that happened to a poor mom with a two-year-old, I believe it was a two-year-old, in a Facebook group I'm in. I'm just gonna tell you really quickly what happened to her here. She said that a woman with a five-year-old came up to her and she had a bad feeling about it but the, because the lady was overly friendly. And basically the scammer, the woman, and her five-year-old distracted this woman, this victim, while somebody else stole her wallet out of her bag. And this happened at an airport in the United States. So no matter where you are, no matter how safe you feel, make sure that you have your things attached to you because you will be distracted traveling with a toddler. I don't say this to scare anybody, I just want you to be as unvulnerable as possible and to protect yourself on your travel day. If you have a connecting flight, I want you to book at least a two hour layover. A lot of people try to book short layovers when they're traveling with babies or toddlers, understandably because they want the day to be as short as possible, but this is a mistake. If if for no other reason you all need to stretch your toddler needs to run around and you need to stand up and stretch a little bit going from one airplane basically a tube in the sky to another tube in the sky sitting in a little seat for a toddler is not good for their mood it's not good for anybody and you also don't want the stress of running through the airport to make a 45 minute connection a longer layover also increases the chances that your bags will actually arrive at your destination on time this is a minor one not a huge deal but make sure that you unscrew your bottles or sippy cups during takeoff and landing on the airplane because the pressure change will make bottles and sippy cups explode when you go to open them. Bring overnight diapers on your travel day just to limit the amount of possible leakage. Make sure and change your baby right before you board at the very last minute possible before you get on the airplane. You're gonna wait in line to get on board the plane. You're gonna be waiting in the aisles, getting onto the airplane. People will be blocking the aisles if you need to get to the bathroom and change your baby. And then suddenly the seatbelt sign is on and you're on the tarmac and you're getting ready for takeoff. It's not, it's a while before you get in the air and you can actually get a chance to change your baby. So make sure you change your baby right before you board. If at all possible, do not change your toddler in your seat. And if you have no idea how to change a baby or a toddler on an airplane, make sure you check out this video next. As far as boarding the plane, you don't want to do family seating. Usually with a toddler, you might be invited. Families traveling with young children, you are welcome to board right now and it's usually early on. Don't do that. Unless you're traveling by yourself, then you might want to do that. But if you're traveling with another adult, let the other adult board during family seating and set up your area on the plane while you take your toddler, stay at the gate, and run them around, get their energy out as much as possible. You want to board at the last possible minute with your toddler so that they are not just just sitting on the plane in their seats, not burning off energy. Now, usually parents remember to bring extra clothes for their babies and toddlers, but it is just as important to remember to bring an extra outfit for you in case your baby vomits on you, in case your baby spills something on you, or in case your bags get lost and you need an extra outfit to change into. This should just be a light outfit that's easy to roll up and squish into your carry-on bag. Hopefully you won't need it, but just in case. An important tip that many parents don't 
don't think about is not to overbook your first two to three days at your destination, especially if there is a time zone change involved. You're essentially going to be working on call, on duty the entire travel day. You are going to be so brain dead and physically exhausted that by the time you arrive in your destination, you are just going to want to rest and your baby too, especially if there is jet lag involved. If you want to learn how to quickly get your baby or toddler over jet lag, make sure you check out this video. Um, easier said than done, but try not to stress about your baby's sleeping, sleeping schedule while traveling and on your trip. Follow your normal sleep routine as closely as possible, if that means reading a book, listening to music, snuggling with them, giving them their loveys, their binkies, all of that stuff, and then just hope for the best. I will say that if you have a very regimented toddler who is very used to sleeping in a dark room at a perfect temperature, you can't expect them to sleep wonderfully right away in a new environment, either on the airplane or at your hotel or whatever it may be. You have to practice at home in the weeks leading up to your trip if you want to have them sleep well on your vacation or on your trip. So if you're gonna use an airplane bed of some kind, one of those blow up beds, or you're gonna use a crib or pack and play that your toddler's not used to, or a slumber pod, try using it at home first in the weeks leading up to your trip. Practice, 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 practice having them sleep with a little bit more light on the go, in the stroller, in the carrier. Practice things at home before you go on vacation. If you're flying within the United States or to the United States, enroll your entire family in TSA PreCheck or Clear or Global Entry, one of these trusted traveler programs, in order to skip the lines at security. Otherwise, they will make you wait in super long lines, even if you have a baby or a toddler with you. There are no family lines, unfortunately when flying in the United States. If you're traveling with your baby or toddler soon, it is going to be awesome. Take a deep breath, try to relax, be your most zen version of yourself, and remember that you are making family memories. This is for you and your baby. It's gonna be great. Check out some of the other videos on my channel to learn tips and tricks for traveling with your baby and making things go a whole lot more smoothly. Good luck and I'll see you in my next video.